Hi, everybody. Welcome back to my channel, Vedic Living. And we are going to continue our series on the zodiac signs. And today we'll be talking about the 2025 predictions for the sign, the zodiac sign Cancer. And this is if your ascendant or your moon is, in, is placed in Cancer. And, you know, I do want to remind you that this is the sidereal Vedic degrees. This is not the zodiac uh, sun sign for tropical astrology or Western astrology. And when I talk about your ascendant being in cancer or your moon being in cancer, it is the Vedic degree. So if you are interested in seeing what your sidereal chart looks like or where your ascendant or your moon is, you can always go to my website, www.vedic-living.com and go to the free chart calculator link and you should be able to input your information and see your chart. This chart will give you your uh, ascendant and your moon. And you're also going to find a place to sign up for my free newsletter because my newsletter gives you a lot of information for the upcoming month and it will have information on when certain things are going up on my website. So you can go and read my blog or purchase the predictions for 2025. I hope you do that. It's a very useful uh, newsletter. Now, with that being said, let's go to the sign cancer. If your ascendant or your moon is in cancer, that means that this, this coming year, you're going to have a lot of changes going on in your life because Jupiter has been transiting since April, 2024. Jupiter has been transiting your 11th house. You've been meeting a lot of new people, new friends, new associates, new connections, new social organizations that you're, you're joining, you're being part of all these various uh, social movements and you are very proud of all that right because jupiter has been traveling your, going through your 11th house this has ha also been good for great gains in the year 2024 for you because 11th house rules money it rules great gains and um, about the may june time frame of 2025 jupiter will move into gemini which is your 12th house now what this means is that whenever jupiter is in the 12th house it gives you a lot of ability and opportunity to complete your projects that you've kept pending that you for some reason have been delayed in the 12th house, Jupiter is like, it's it's like tying a bow on all those things that you wanted to finish and it's completed. Because after that, when Jupiter moves into your first house, it's new beginnings. Things are all starting afresh. You're going into a new phase of your life when Jupiter goes into the first house in 2026. So that means the year 2025 is a time for you to close your previous projects to finish what you've started. So that's what it's going to give you the opportunity for. You may be even thinking about changing something about your home or, or renovating to some extent because Jupiter being in Gemini in your 12th house will aspect your 4th house Libra and it'll aspect your 8th house. Now, 4th house is your home and real estate. So this past um, few months, you may have even been thinking about it, but once Jupiter moves into the 12th house, in May of 2025, I think you will be very strongly thinking about moving or even changing something about your home. It's very possible. And um, it will also make you incredibly psychic. You know, I always tell my clients when Jupiter transits your 12th house, your dreams are going to be very much vivid. You may even have premonitions. You should keep a dream journal when Jupiter goes through your 12th house for sure, because you are getting, receiving a lot of messages. It's almost like the channel is open between you and the spirit world and you're, you're constantly getting these messages. So this is definitely a time for you to pay attention to your dreams and your psychic and intuitive strength. You're going to have uh, gut feelings about things. You're going to have like a, a, a psychic intuitive feeling about a certain place or a certain person. And these are all very, very strong. And that's what, that's the knowledge Jupiter gives you in the 12th house. It gives you all this amazing knowledge that you can use in your life. And it can also make you very, very spiritual. So that's very nice that it's doing that. And Towards the end of 2025, October, November, and December, for a little bit of time, Jupiter is going to go into Cancer in your first house, which means that time is going to be like a kind of like a, you know, a, a peek into what it's going to be like in 2026, because 
you know, Jupiter is going to be in Cancer in 2026 for a whole year. So this two month period is like a, a, you know, a trailer to the movie that's yet to come. And when Jupiter goes into Cancer in your first house, you are feeling very expansive. You want to really learn a lot of things, your dreams and your ambitions. Everything's through the roof. You are wanting to change things, maybe even change your appearance. You want to change your, um, you know, the way you're, you're living your life. You are thinking about a lot of various expansive things that you, you want to do. And that's happening in the end of the year, but not for the whole time, just for a couple of months. And then Jupiter goes back into the 12th house. Now, uh, the whole time from about June of 2025 till June of 2026, except for those two months, October, November uh, 2025, the rest of the time, Jupiter is in your 12th house, which means you may be thinking about traveling to foreign lands. Foreign travels is part of the 12th house. If you've had visa, immigration-related issues, those things are going to res be resolved when Jupiter transits your 12th house. And you will also have the ability to explore new cultures, to learn new things, maybe learn a new language. All these things happen when Jupiter transits your 12th house. You could be very imaginative. Your inspiration is at an all-time high. Um, you're feeling good. You know, this is, a, this is a time of introspection. You may feel a little detached from friends and things like that because when Jupiter is in the 12th house, you feel a little detached. You want to be by yourself because it's a time of psychic introspection. And, you know, the, you're, you automatically feel like just being by yourself. And that's okay because it really helps you experience that spiritual awakening during this time frame. So that's that's a good good time frame for um, you know spirituality. Saturn has been in your eighth house. So this has not been a great uh, two years for you, right? Because it's a time of transformation that you've gone through 2023 and 2024. Saturn has been transiting your eighth house. It's been very transformative, but it's also been a little bit of a tough time frame for you. And for two more months, it's going to be there. So in the end of March, Saturn's going to move on into your ninth house. Now, from the eighth house energy, you're going to shift to having about six planets in the ninth house in the month of April and May. What does that mean? That means you will be traveling a lot. You may be thinking about teaching. You may be thinking about writing or coaching. Um, you, are, you want to travel. And a lot of things are going to happen in terms of your father, if he's still around. Because as so many planets in the ninth house, you are going to have a lot of karmic uh, kind of realizations about what, you know, the past, about your father, about the past. And if he's still around, there's going to be a healing to that relationship. You're going to be able to resolve a lot of things that were pending in, in, in case of your father. And that's that's going to be a big deal in the coming year. Now, April, May timeframe with all these planets in the ninth house, you may feel like you want to take something new to study or learn. You may be wanting to expand your horizons with learning new things and something that is spiritual maybe even because that's the ninth house. Ninth house is the house of luck and fortune with all of these planets there. You may, you know, especially with Neptune being there, you will realize something about the past that was not the truth. And it's going to come out in the month of April and May. And um, it'll, cre it'll create long-term healing because ninth house is a very, very auspicious house. It's just that with Neptune there, something that was misleading from the past is come kind of being brought out into the open. And you have to kind of deal with it. And this could have could this could be having something to do with your father or your father figure, very possible. Um, on the other hand, with all these planets being there, you are feeling very spiritual. Ninth house is also the house of spirituality, and Jupiter is in Gemini, which is a twelfth house. I mean, between the ninth and twelfth, I think this is a great time for you to get into some kind of metaphysical studies or spirituality or travel to see foreign spiritual places or places of pilgrimage and things like that, you may feel inclined to do that. Rahu and Ketu have been in your ninth and third for about a year, and uh, they will be there till June of 2025. And then Rahu shifts into your eighth house and Ketu shifts into your second house. You are going to be very focused on your finances. 
in the second half of 2025. This means that whenever K2 goes into the second house, you feel like you can do better. You know, the thought crosses your mind that, you know what, maybe I should be making more money or maybe I can have another revenue stream to my business. Maybe I can expand my business. Maybe I can look for a different job. Those kind of thoughts cross your mind when K2 comes into the second house because you really feel like you want to expand your financial uh, status. And with Rahu in your eighth house, you are thinking of metaphysics and spirituality, and uh, you may be looking at investments, and uh, there may possibly be an inheritance coming your way. All of those things can happen with eighth house Rahu. Now, one thing I do want to caution with eighth house Rahu is that you could feel a little stressed out with this placement. Uh, eighth house rules your subconscious mind and Rahu can magnify everything uh, in your subconscious mind. So if something is happening around you in a normal sense, you may not have thought too much about it. But when Rahu is transiting your eighth house, it becomes expanded in your mind and you can get really anxious and stressed out about it. So just watch your stress levels during this time frame. Uh, in the coming <clears throat> year and a half after June of 2025, because that's when Rahu is transiting your 8th house and use the time for all the positive meanings of the 8th house, which is to learn something metaphysical, learn yoga or meditation. Meditation will help you deal with your um, stress. And uh, you could even pick up like a spiritual book to read or something like that, because this is a time, you know, with all the planets in the ninth house, you can learn something new as well. You're feeling that you want to do that. So that's a way to kind of, you know, bypass the, the ill effects of that transit and get to the positive effects of that transit, because nothing in the chart is really set in stone. There are ways to find the best way to use that energy and to... Uh, deal with the negative effects in a in a better way okay now we talked about the nodes we talked about saturn and jupiter now mars will be debilitated um in about, about till about the first week of june mars is going to be debilitated and it's going to be in your first house which can make you a little frustrated april may june you may feel a little frustrated about life and things because debilitated mars going through your first house you may feel a little triggered like you want to be angry with somebody or 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 it's just that people around you are triggering you more you know there's more incompetence around you maybe or something like that where you want to feel a little um, upset or you you have anger building up inside. So there's another reason why Rahu in the eighth can help you in terms of um, avoiding the stress by learning meditation or something like that. Because Mars being in your first house, you are feeling a little triggered by things. And this is this is April, May and June of 2025. Now, do watch out for migraines and headaches because debilitated Mars being in your first house, it can bring about some, um, you know, head related problems, which is usually nine times out of 10, I see migraines and things like that. So watch out for that. And another thing is when Mars is transiting your first house, it will aspect your fourth house. So something about your home, you may not be happy about. There may be unforeseen repairs or something that is frustrating you. So, you know, just watch out those months of April, May and June of 2025. And I think the rest of the year is going to be amazing for you. As long as you're focusing on the energies of the houses where the planets are bringing you positive results. With that being said, those are the predictions for the sign of cancer for the year 2025. And I'll see you next time with the predictions for Leo. And until then, thank you so much for coming to my channel. Do subscribe and like uh, my videos and um, I'll see you next time. Wish you all the very best. Thank you.